So you've made the jump from VMware to Proxmox. You're loving the power, the flexibility, but then you hit a wall. A really, really frustrating wall when it comes to storage performance. Today, we're going to unpack exactly why your ISCSI setup might be absolutely crawling, and more importantly, what you can actually do about it. Does this sound painfully familiar? You kick off a backup, maybe just run a Windows update on a single VM, and suddenly, boom, every other virtual machine on that host just stops. The I.O. wait time goes through the roof. If you've been pulling your hair out over this, trust me, you are not alone. It's a classic symptom of trying to force a VMware mindset onto a Proxmox setup. And this slide, this right here is the whole story in a nutshell. Think about it this way. Moving from VMware to Proxmox is like trading in a polished luxury sedan for a souped-up DIY race car. That sedan, it's smooth, it's comfortable, it handles everything for you behind the scenes. But the race car, it's raw, it's incredibly powerful, but it demands that you get your hands dirty. You have to tune it just right to get that mind-blowing performance. So why exactly is our race car sputtering on the track? Let's pop the hood and get to the bottom of this. We're going to diagnose the real reasons your storage is choking the second you put any pressure on it. And the answer, you'll see, comes down to some really fundamental differences in how these systems are built. This is the absolute heart of the matter. VMware's VMFS, its file system, it's like a super sophisticated suspension system. It's designed from the ground up to smooth out all the bumps from dozens of VMs hitting the storage at once. But Proxmox, when you use a standard LVM over iSCSI setup, it's completely different. It gives each VM a raw, direct pipeline to the block storage. There's no friendly manager in the middle, which means when one VM's IO hits a massive pothole, the entire chassis shakes. And that's really the main culprit right there. LVM over iSCSI, as great as it is for other things, just wasn't designed for this kind of free-for-all, high-concurrency workload. It doesn't have that sophisticated I.O. queuing that VMFS has baked in. This creates the classic noisy neighbor problem, where one VM that's hungry for I.O. can just hog the entire connection, effectively starving all the other VMs. Oh, and your storage array itself can make this a whole lot worse. A lot of people coming to Proxmox will set up TrueNAS using ROD Z2. And look, it's fantastic for durability, for archiving huge files, but for the high random I.O. that virtual machines generate, it is, as this user puts it so perfectly, a performance trap. You're just asking for trouble. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, hold on, I'm using all flash SSDs in a mirrored setup. That should be blazing fast. And you're right, that's a much, much better configuration. But you can still hit that performance wall. If your drives don't have their own DRAM caches, or if you don't have a dedicated SL log for handling synchronous writes, even a high-spec array can get bogged down by a demanding VM workload. So in the mission to fix this, we all start tweaking things, right? We go to the forums, we read a bunch of posts, and we start chasing fixes. But a lot of them, for this specific problem, are total dead ends. So let's debunk a few of the most common things people try. This is always step one. My storage is slow, so it must be the network pipe connecting to it. Let's enable jumbo frames. Let's set up multipathing to get more bandwidth. That has to be the answer, right? And the answer is, well, kinda. Look, these things are good practices. They can absolutely help with throughput and redundancy, and you should probably do them anyway. But they are not the magic bullet here. If the real problem is a traffic jam happening at the storage array itself, making the highway leading to it wider won't fix a thing. Okay, okay, so it's not the network. Maybe it's the VM config. You see this one all the time. People recommend enabling the I.O. thread option for your virtual disks. That sounds promising, doesn't it? It has I.O. right in the name. Yeah, probably not. I.O. thread is designed to optimize how the CPU handles I.O. operations within the VM, giving it a dedicated thread. It can help in very specific CPU-bound I.O. scenarios, but it has absolutely no power to fix a fundamental bottleneck that's happening way downstream at the shared storage level. All right. Enough about what doesn't work. Let's get to the good stuff. Let's talk about what does work. What are the proven, battle-tested strategies that seasoned Proxmox pros use to get that race car performance we've been talking about? Here are the big four. First, and this is a huge one, seriously consider switching from iSCSI to NFS. Because NFS works at the file level, it handles concurrency and locking in a way that's much more graceful for this kind of environment. Second, if you're on ZFS, rebuild your pool using striped mirrors, think RAID 10. The random I.O. performance is just leagues better than RAID Z. 
Third, especially if you have databases or other write-heavy loads, adding a dedicated S-Log device is a game-changer for latency. And finally, take a step back and rethink the whole thing. Maybe centralized storage isn't the answer. Maybe local ZFS storage on each host with replication is a better fit for you. So I mentioned a slog, but what actually is it? It stands for separate log device. The easiest way to think about it is as a tiny, ridiculously fast landing zone, almost always a fast NVMe drive. It's built to handle something called synchronous writes, which is when an application, like a database, needs a guarantee that its data is safely on disk before it moves on. A slog can give that guarantee instantly, which just crushes latency. And then it moves the data to your slower main storage in the background. And hey, here's a quick bonus tip while you're in there tuning everything. Be ready for the Windows Virtio Blues. For whatever reason, getting a fresh Windows install to see the Virtio drivers for the storage controller can be a massive headache. The big takeaway here is test that process out and have your driver plan ready before you're in the middle of a critical migration. Trust me on this one. Okay, so as we wrap this all up, it becomes pretty clear that the real solution isn't just about flipping a switch. It's about a fundamental shift in how you think. You have to stop thinking like a VMware admin and start thinking like a Proxmox engineer. This quote from one of the users in our source material, it just says it all, doesn't it? If you try to build a perfect one-to-one -one copy of your vSphere environment in Proxmox, you are setting yourself up for a world of frustration. The tools are different, the philosophies are different, and the best practices are completely different. But this isn't a bad thing. This is actually Proxmox's greatest strength. You have this incredible flexibility to use ZFS, NFS, Ceph, local storage, whatever you want. You have fine-grained control to tune everything right down to the metal. Yeah, it's a little more work, but it also gives you so much more power and so many more options. And that's really the bottom line here. You chose the powerful, super customizable race car. It takes more knowledge and it takes a willingness to get under the hood and get your hands dirty, but the performance you can unlock once you learn how to tune it is just immense. So the only question left is, are you ready to get in that driver's seat?